Hey guys, first of all, I want to wish you all a very, very happy Christmas and just say thank you for all your uh, comments and uh, emails and support throughout the year. And uh, over the last few days, I started getting really, really nostalgic and uh, thinking about all the uh, games I got for Christmas uh, on my Amstrad, and I really, really miss those days. And I thought I'd share my uh, my top five favourite games I got for Christmas, and um, I'd like to hear what yours were. So let's start off. Uh, number five was uh, The Simpsons, Bart versus the Space Mutants, and. Um, my parents uh, certainly surprised me with this one. I wasn't expecting it. In fact, I wasn't. I never actually seen a Simpsons cartoon in my life, but um, I knew all about the Simpsons. I even had uh, the do the Bartman single and stuff like that. Despite never actually watching an episode because it was always on Sky at the time, and we didn't have Sky. So the object of this uh, first level is to get rid of all the uh, purple objects by uh, using your spray can or using your uh, ingenuity. You can switch on the x-ray specs and see which uh, humans are actually aliens. Go in shops and buy stuff. Ah damn it, accidentally bought two wrenches by mistake. I only need one to use in this uh, fire hydrant there. And that will uh, spray that thing uh, red. And so forth. Uh, use a cherry bomb to scare the purple parrot. Use a rocket to get rid of the uh, purple bird and stuff like that. Later levels see you uh, knocking hats off people and uh, uh, collecting uh, nuclear rods in the nuclear power plant. Anyway, number four, Operation Wolf. But mostly because um, I, I was actually asked for the uh, Magnum uh, light phaser, the light gun, and I got that for Christmas. And uh, Operation Wolf was uh, one of the games bundled with it that you could use the light gun on. And it was great fun. It was a great game in its own right without the light gun, of course. Probably better so, because the light gun wasn't very good. It was a uh, tad hit and miss. <laughs> and a uh, really sort of uh, stodgy trigger. Uh, the rest of the games, I think there were six of the games that came uh, on the disc with the uh, light gun. Most of them weren't very good, and like I said, it was very hard to target things properly. But uh, nothing says Christmas like blood, guts, and explosions. <laughs> and uh, Operation Wolf had it in the bucket load, and there's one of the finest arcade conversions on the Amstrad. Some really, really gorgeous, uh, fast-moving graphics, lots of stuff going on the screen, and some really good sound effects things to move to jungle levels and uh, things like that, just like in the arcade. Brilliant stuff. Right, number three. Impossible Mission 2. Um, my parents uh, really surprised me this one. Uh, I had no idea they were getting me this for Christmas. And I hadn't even played the uh, original uh, Impossible Mission before. Or had even heard of it actually. I was a bit young at the time. I did never read magazines uh, like Amstrad Actions and stuff. So I relied on my parents who uh, probably asked in the shop which was the best game to get. And uh, obviously someone recommended this. And uh, I absolutely love this to bits. It was a real uh, nice surprise. As you can see, the graphics are really lovely, and uh, the gameplay is as brilliant as the original. I think it's a, a real uh, notch up on the original game, actually. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think people seem to like this as much as the original uh, from reading of reviews. But I absolutely love the concept of the Impossible Mission, which uh, introduced like new robots, like that um, pincer crab type thing that's chasing me at the bottom there. And it was a little bit more forgiving with your jumps and stuff like that. Although it still had, uh, oh yeah, of course, yeah, and he had uh, lots of new items to use, like time bombs, which you could blow up um, floors with and robots, as well as other new things you can use in the computer there. So that's a really, really great game. Number two, Christmas wouldn't be complete without James Bond, and uh, my parents again surprised me of live and let die conversion from Domok software. Boo. This is actually a quite a good Domok game and a quite a good bomb game for once. Uh, mostly because it was programmed by Elite Software and was just going to be sort of a uh, speedboat sort of uh, shoot 'em up type game. Um, without any license attached to it, but uh, 
Dominic got wind and bought this and uh, I absolutely love this so I spent nearly all Christmas day playing this and I thought, I thought this was great fun anything James Bond I loved it was made even more better that Live and Let Die was actually on the TV that Christmas as well and uh, lots of great action in this game purely speedboat only but um, top stuff nonetheless well worth checking out long plays of these games are already in my channel anyway so on to number one of course it's Ghostbusters 2 and this was a big Christmas release from Activision Software and the movie hadn't been out that long as well and it felt really really Christmassy because uh, I think the movie was sort of set around Christmas just before New Year's Eve of course so it really helped add to the atmosphere of uh, getting this on uh, Christmas and playing this over the Christmas period up to New Year's and it's a fantastic game programmed by the Oliver Twins no less Oliver Twins of the uh, Dizzy fame of course and some really really great touches like in this first level watch uh, Ray's face in the bottom right corner there as he screams there we go again, watch him again love it <laughs> and fantastic music and sound effects and uh, like cutscenes with uh, you know um, digitised pictures from the movie all add to it and uh, uh, on to the second level when you're controlling the Statue of Liberty I was absolutely blown away by this as a kid I'd never seen anything like this on the Amstrad at the time seen like the uh, giant Statue of Liberty walking <laughs> absolutely fantastically done and uh, one of the best film licenses ever so I was absolutely stoked I got this game <clears throat> it was certainly a game I did ask my parents for this uh, for that Christmas I was definitely very 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 happy when I uh, unwrapped it and even more so when I played it and difficulty was just about right as well spent many many hours practicing and uh, eventually progressed to this level and eventually got to the final level. I don't think I ever completed it as a kid until much later on when I worked out what you need to do in the uh, museum level. <clears throat> well first of all you've got to descend your Ghostbusters down on the ropes make sure they get a safe uh, landing. Unfortunately I've just stunned Ray there. Again some really really nice digitized pictures there Only three levels in the game, but there's plenty to it. I mean, on this, first of all, rescue Oscar the baby and hide him behind the crates. Next, go and find Janos from the slime him, and then uh, get two Ghostbusters with proton packs onto Vigo. And finally, Ray gets possessed by Vigo, so you need to send him back into the uh, oil painting where he came from. And then Ray will be saved, and that's uh, the game complete. And. Uh, yeah, absolutely loved it. So guys, I'd really, really like to hear what your uh, favourite games you got for, your Chris for Christmas, whether it be on the Amstrad or uh, your particular system at the time. Um, so I'd love to hear what your top five uh, games were you got for Christmas as well. But yeah, so thanks guys. I hope you have a really, really nice Christmas and I'll see you in about a week or two's time. Cheers.